Hi, and welcome to another edition of the 2B Honey blog with the 2B Honey Hive Hotel. What we're going to be looking at this week, we're going to do a compare and contrast of a hive inspection. We're going to look at how you work with the uh, 2B Honey Hive and how you can check to see the progress of the bees and the progress of the honey production. We're also going to compare that to the Langstroff Hive and how you do a uh, hive inspection with this one. Here you have to lift up each box to look at the frames and then lift it up to look at the frames underneath. And with the 2B Honey Hive, you're just moving them out nice and easy. Um, so get ready, we're gonna get started and you'll see how the whole thing progresses and you'll see the comparison and contrast between the two. And don't forget, we have our 2B Honey Fact of the Week. And this week, I'm gonna give you a little hint to see if you know, what is a drone bee and what is their purpose in the hive? That's coming at the end of our blog. Thanks, and we're gonna get started. <laughs> so now we'll look inside the 2B Honey Hive Hotel. And now we're going to open this up. Yeah. So you'll see for a hive inspection, all we're doing is just opening this right up. And here's our hive inspection. We'll give it one more little puff just to help make sure everybody's nice and easy, nice and calm. And now we can look. I can even kneel down with this, which is one of the nice things. You don't have to hang over the top. You can kneel down, which is really good for your back. Now, oh my goodness, look at that. That's, I am gonna. This is where we're looking at good honey frames. This is all the way on the end where we have that so I'm actually going to start putting those up on top okay, so if we go like that let's see here another one with the honey Oh, so this is how a hive inspection in the 2B Honey Hive Hotel, this is how easily a hive inspection is done. And you could even check on the brood to see how the brood is coming. See, so these all on the end are honey where in the middle is where we have the queen going back and forth so she's able to lay eggs going through the middle. So you, so you have the honey around the edges and you have the brood in the middle. And now if you're looking, you can see, whoop, let me show you right here. See this? Those are drone cells right there. Those are the drones. That's what we're gonna talk about in a little bit. And this is how we do our inspection where you can see the honey going around the edges and the brood coming down the bottom, which is very, very good, very, very healthy. And you'll see how I'm actually creating another hive. So we'll be able to just take this. She's right up there. Okay.
normally you would need a hive tool and you'll see on the Langstroth where we need a hive tool to break things up. But with the 2B Honey Hive Hotel, we don't need that. All the way down you can see a lot of this is a lot of brood you can see fresh brood on that one which means fresh eggs all the way around here you can see it going all the way up all the way down all the way around let's look at the other side real quick Really nice, healthy frame that we have right here. This is. Mm. Look at that. Can you see the honey there? That's a nice, fresh, big honey frame. Tilted, all the... tilted so it glistens. Yeah. Was I took some of the frames with brood and with honey and I put them on top. And some of the frames with brood and honey and left them on the bottom. So this we're going to see if this develops into a natural split. Okay, then I'm just going to put the empty frames back in the top and the bottom to help everything continue to grow and expand. Then we're going to look at our Russian bees to see how well they're doing. Okay, we're going to give these a little bit of a puff. That's a lot of smoke, so we're going to move back a little bit. Okay. And now we'll see how the Russian bees are doing. They have a lot of different comb growing, moving all the way across. So we're going to do... You'll see the honey, and then you'll see the brew. So this is really going well right there. Everything moving along. Oh, it's doing so well. Looking for the queen. I don't see her right here. You see all kinds of babies going around. Right there. Fresh brood. Again. A lot of brood going on that. You'll see the difference between the honey up on top and those are the brood in the middle. Okay? So you can see the difference between those. And these all, these are pretty heavy. Okay. So this one's looking fantastic right there. Nice and easy. Okay. Now, if you remember, we were talking about the Russian bees, but you'll see how, really how calm these Russian bees are. All the bees that I have, very calm, very gentle bees. Now, here's one of our new frames. We have to be really careful holding. Here we go. Looks good. Looks good. Looks healthy. Now with these, I can't manipulate these high these frames as much because they don't have the bottom board, so they're less secure. And if I flip, keep flipping these around, the frame or the wax comb could actually fall out. Whether it's honeycomb or brood comb, you don't want that to happen. But if it does, we can always fix it. And in another blog episode, I'll show you how you fix a frame if some of the comb comes out. Oh, there she is. 
you look, you ready? Can you see her right there? Can you see her? That's our queen. Can you see our queen right there? She's going around with this brand new comb and she's going around laying it, finding places to lay eggs, laying eggs and, and making sure she's doing fine to help expand. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take her, I'm gonna put her in the top apartment and I'm gonna put some frames up there for her to lay some more eggs. So she, instead of the kids moving out, she moved upstairs with half of her family and now the rest of the kids are down here so they can start two new families coming. Okay, so she's going to have some room here to actually work with her uh, comb and to start building a whole new family here, whole new family here. So what we're going to look at next week, we're going to see if we have four hives here or if we still just have two. Okay. Let me put the rest of these in. Gotta open the hole. Yep, and now we have the bottom hole here open and we have the hole there for them to go out. Is it open? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Now what we're going to do, we're going to look at the Langstroth hive just to see the difference in in how we work with them. Put a little bit of smoke down there, it helps them relax. And then when I open the top, I'm going to put a little bit of smoke under each section. Okay, now I do need tools a little bit more when I'm using the Langstroth hive. First, you take off the top cover. Okay, and you'll see the bees right there. I'm going to give it a little puff right here. Now, I like the Langstroth hive, don't get me wrong. I really do like it. I like using it. It's a very good producer. My thing is, when you see how it works on your back, that's my main argument with it. Okay, so we're gonna lift this up a little bit. Now this is the inner cover. What we have here, this is called burr comb. Okay, and you'll see from here, I'll show you in a minute, how the burr comb means this might need another, uh, another box on top for more honey. You do a couple little puffs. This helps the bees calm down. Okay, now what I do is you start, remember I said you always take one out first? Here's one we're taking out, get the honey on there. Now remember on the 2B Honey Hive Hotel, this would be, remember they would be making it down on a blank frame, but here we have the pre-made plastic and wood, we have both. And you'll see how they will work on their own with that meaning they will make their own honeycomb or brood comb from it. So now if we move this over, you can see here, see the honey? I mean, this is looking fit. These do a great job on here. Okay? Great job with the honey production that we have. I think I got a little girl going up my pant leg. Oh, you want to stop? No, it happens. <laughs> if she stings me, she stings me. Okay. Just be careful where she stings you. Uh huh. Okay, ready? So now we're keep going up. More. More honey, honey, honey. And if you see the queen, let me know. Because if you see the queen, then we have to send her to the all the way down to the bottom. There's another one. A little puff here to raise. I just I do this because I don't want to squish anybody with my fingers. And if they start getting active, then my they can get up in my fingers. Oh my goodness. Look at that Rebecca. Mm. That is wow. all. See this? Now wait till I show you the other side. Ready? Captain. That's honey. Ready to go. That's some good honey right there. <laughs> good eating. So you'll see the one advantage here, we're getting a lot more honey, right? But at the same time, the hive manipulation is a lot worse. Look at all this. Now, next time we come up, this whole thing will probably be capped. Okay? 
Now I'm going to move this last one over. All right. And then I'll put, remember our frame, the first one we took out? Now we put it back. Now that was simple enough, right? What's the big deal? Here's the big deal. If these 10 frames all weigh five pounds each, that's 50 pounds that I have to pick up. And that's the one of the big problems with it. You take your hive tool because they stick it together. There we go. Now I have to pick this up and I'm going to put it over here. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh. All right. Now, if you look here, you'll see. First, they're very calm, very gentle. This is nice. This is what you want. Also, I want you to notice that there are bees here, but on the ends, not so much. And that's very, very normal. Okay? The 2B Honey Hive Hotel, if you remember, they start in the middle and they work their way out. They do that with every type of hive. A tall hive, they're just in the middle of the tall hive working their way out. This one. So you'll see this whole box that I have here, and really, we focused on the middle. Here's what we do now, believe it or not. We have to go all the way down from this, and then we have to lift this one up to check the bottom. because it's very awkward. You don't use your legs to pick them up when you're picking them up from different heights. All right, let's look here quick to see where we're at. Set this aside. Because this, although it's only half full, still weighs a good 25 pounds. So what you're doing is you're working all these boxes. And really, you have to take apart the bee's house. You're taking everything apart just to look at it and then put it back together. And then when you're done, we're sitting here putting everything back for the bees. On one hand, you can say it's really easy because you're just working with the boxes where this big monster right here is uh, uh, people might be intimidated by. But once you start using the 2B Honey Hive Hotel, you find that it's so much easier to work with it's easier for the bees, it's easier for my back, and um, it's much easier to show you happy things on the blog. So let me get this tied up, and then we'll do our trivia fact of the week. Okay. If you look up here, you can see the bees kind of coming in and out of their new apartment. Over there, you can see them also. They're just starting. They're starting to get accustomed to the new uh, to the new apartment up on top and the one down in the middle. All right, now let's get going with our two bee honey fact of the week. If you remember, I mentioned drones. Well, what are drones? Drones are male bees. All bees that work in the hive are female bees. The queen is a female and all the worker bees are females. They go out, they gather the nectar, they gather everything, they bring it back, the pollen, the honey, they do all the work. The drones, they just hang out, they go out and party during the day, and then they come back and they just eat whatever they can eat. They don't harvest anything, they don't find anything. They eat the, the honey, they eat the nectar, they eat the pollen. They don't do any work. 
what they do do is that when there's a queen and she goes out what the the drone bees they get together and they see her and they go let's check this out one by one the drones will go up to where the the queen is usually it's a virgin queen but not always and as the queen flies around the drone bees go up and mate with her as soon as they mate with the queen they die and then the rest of the drones or a handful of them will mate so the queen bee is actually mated with multiple different drones this is their entire job in the fall when there's no more mating of queens and no more queen bees being uh, hatched no more queen bees going out they will stop laying drone eggs and um, they'll stop feeding the drones and they'll actually kick them out of the house they'll kick the drones out and then uh, just like that that boyfriend or that husband who doesn't do any work get them out of here <laughs> So then the bees just, you can't say that. They make the winter and they go through the winter by themselves, the ladies together, huddling, all the, the worker bees and the queen. They work together to make sure they and have the enough And the nursery bee, the nurse maid. Bees, the nurse bees too. And then in the spring, she'll start making more drones for the next uh, queens that come out for the drones to take care of. What percentage of the hive are drones? In a hive, there's a, usually about 10% of the bees in the hive or drone bees. It can be higher, it can be lower, but normally it's about 10%. And you'll see where I showed you some of the uh, brood were bubbled up. Those, you know that those are the drone bees because they're larger, so they need more room. And a drone bee cannot sting you. It literally can do nothing. It can't even defend the hive. So remember. Procreate. That's it, just a procreation. That's their entire job, mate with the queen and help make more baby bees. So the main thing to remember is, in a beehive, everybody who's working and doing a job is a female bee. And everybody who's just hanging out waiting for the ladies, <laughs> that's the drone bee. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next week.